Hello and welcome. In today's video, I'm going to be taking a Polar Star Jack and Max Emmy hop up unit and putting it in this a Nerf Rapid Strike. I hope you enjoy. This. This was my original Nerf Polar Star. It was a Nerf Retaliator that was hauled out and a Polar Star Jack along with a Max Hop was installed. This was so much fun to play with on the field and I hope to take what I learned from this to make the second version better. In order to create this gun we have to first destroy a Nerf gun and then figure out how to fit the internals of an airsoft gun inside. So let's get to that. At this point, I have the Nerf gun open and I begin to evaluate where I can put each component and what I need to take out. Once I have all the parts out of the Nerf gun shell, I grab my normal M4 and begin to take out its parts to then put into the Nerf gun. I then take the internals of the Nerf gun and see what I can harvest and reuse. My camera died. But I got the electronics out of the trigger box and I then found a place best suitable to put the trigger board for the jack. Um, I am going to sink the trigger board in here and then make a bridge coming from here to the actual switch. Um, so I got this all apart and I have been drumming it out again. Sorry for the camera turning off. And I am making it so this can sink down to the bottom. And then it'll I'll shave off this part of the trigger so the trigger actually rides over the board. Okay. So I think I finally got the trigger board situated. It's a little bumpy right now, but I'm going to put some uh, tape back here to kind of cushion it a little anyways, and I think that will take up some of the slack that's uh, in there right now. But we can try to fit the trigger now. This cord is going to have to get relocated. It'll probably be bent like that, which isn't the best for this connection, but it's kind of the only way we can get this cord out of the way. Okay, so when this trigger sits in here, it is contacting this, which uh, is the receptacle for uh, the solenoid switch, which needs room anyway. So I think I'm going to shave off most of this and then probably trim this because we don't need this anymore. So I'm going to do that. So. Now that I've trimmed that off a little, this does want to fit, and since I'm going to uh, hair trigger this, it's only going to move about that far anyway, so it's not going to contact this. I might still trim that off though, just in case, and to give that uh, wire going to the solenoid a little bit more room. And the wire to the solenoid also might need to be extended for the longer stretch that has to travel than in an M4 trigger box, which... Uh, or a gearbox, which requires a lot less length. That might be uh, something that has to be done. But for now, this fits. Uh, yeah, that might need to be just trimmed off real quick, but otherwise, looks good. Okay, now we're gonna put this to the side for now, because uh, that needs some 3D modeling and CAD work, so this now we're going to work on getting the actual polar star itself situated uh, the thing that makes this entire project possible is this part that you can find on shapeways uh, I can't remember the name of the uh, designer and the maker but I'll put that on screen now and this part is amazing it directly attaches your polar star Jack, F2, F1, oh, uh, even Kythera if you could figure out a 
trigger system for that. But the electro pneumatic polar stars fits perfectly, fits this to your max hop up, the max ME. And it works great. It gets you perfect um, alignment, which is a problem I had, which is why I originally switched to this. My gearbox that's in my gun, uh, my main gun, my M4, is uh, cut like this. And my, it holds my trigger, my stock, and my grip, but then this sits out of it. And then I just 3D printed this little thing, which you can also get when you buy this. Um, and this sits here, and you put a spring going from here to your stock plate, and that keeps this all uh, together. And it's amazing. It fixes all the alignment issues I had. Uh, so this is what's going to make this project possible. This way I don't have to align a gearbox and a hop-up unit and do any of that. I can just simply take this, and if I can situate this in here, it'll work quite well. I do need to cut this. Uh, it's contacting the back of the Polar Star. Uh, but I'm going to use the original barrel and just put spacers in it. Uh, 3D print spacers to center the barrel. But this needs to be cut. And then also the other problem I'm running into is when I have the trigger box uh, all put together and in the gun. The Polar Star is rubbing here, so I'm going to have to also trim this up. Uh, another thing I need to cons take into consideration is the line. Uh, I need a way to run the line. I could just exit the line here, but I think it will look much better and cleaner if it comes at the bottom of the grip, like a traditional uh, uh, Polar Star or M4 build. So, uh, and to cover the extended barrel, I'm going to use this Nerf suppressor muzzle brake thing. Uh, but that will cover the end of the barrel, and I just need to get this situated here. Uh, the original battery box will work great for my application, because it will hold the FCU and battery. Uh, that can just sit right in there, and what I need to do is run this cable from here all the way up and I'm going to use the original cable routing uh, cover that they have in here to run the wires for the motors. I'm going to use this to hide the wire to go into here so it doesn't snag on anything. The last thing I need to do is devise a magwell system. This is just a chopped up magwell from a Valken ASL. Uh, this is what I used in the original Nerf Polar Star, and I'm just going to reuse it, reuse it again. I just put a spring here, and contacts the outer shell, and it was glued on, but it fell off. And this, I will just need to dremel out a place to sit. And then the mag release is the one thing that I need to figure out. I could just have it poke through the shell, um, like my old gun, but I thought it would be cool to use the original mag release for the Nerf gun. But I don't know how I would do that with the limited space and limited thickness of the rifle. So that will be something I have to figure out. Additionally, I'm going to use the original stock with the adjustability that it provides. I think that's pretty cool to retain that feature. And then also I'm going to have this, the original uh, uh, de-jamming door, be used to adjust up your hop-up. So I need to do this and I need to dremel out this and dremel out room for this. Uh, additionally for alignment, I was considering using the front of this Valken receiver and chopping just this so it holds the hop up uh, in place. It holds uh, that in place and holds it vertical. And additionally, it will align uh, the magwell and the mag. So that could be used, but uh, just have to figure that out.
Okay, so I got this and I cut it, cut it, and now it fits a little better. So I can keep this post now, and I just need to cut the shell for this. Um, already marked it out, and I just gotta sink this down in. This should be cut down far enough for the Polar Star. Polar Star should sit here. I'll make some 3D printed things to hold it better in place, and then I gotta deal with the trigger board. Um, or the trigger box. Uh, I gotta sync that trigger up, but I need to do that in CAD, so let's do this. Okay, so after lots and lots of dremeling, I was able to get this all the way down. Uh, it is halfway down. Uh, maybe just a little bit less, but I think the shell's gonna bow a little and I'll keep it all in place. But that is down. Very happy with how that worked. I did poke a tiny hole through the shell, but luckily it's down where you can't really see it. Uh, so now I have to do the same thing to this shell. I have to do all this work here, so that'll be fun, but yep, that's what I got to Okay, so I got that all drummed out. The this now fits in there, and I can begin the rest of the fitting. So this slides right in here. That pops in. This sits down in there. And then this sits over this. And, as you can see, it closes. All nice and neat. And an M4 mag slides right on in there. And an M4 mag will just stick out like that. Okay, and then I need to haul out this for the FCU and the battery. And I need to finish this uh, for the trigger unit, or the trigger board. And then the rest of the decorational pieces. Uh, I want to make sure this still fits down in here. such as this fits in here. It'll make connecting these two much easier. I can also try this barrel nut off of a different Lancer tactical. This one's actually Falcon.
Okay, that fits, that barrel nut fits in there, which will secure uh, the outer barrel to the rest of the, uh, what's left of the other receiver. I removed this terminal um, so that I have a place to feed the FCU wire through. Um, that way I don't have to drill any holes and I can just use the hole that's already there. Um, so this will slide right in here and the wire will wrap up here through underneath this and up to that. It should be long enough and it'll allow me to pull this out to about there and um, extract the battery in FCU and uh, all of that. So that looks like it'll work pretty well. This is mostly figured out now. I All this fits, it's, semi, it's pretty secure. The only thing I need to do is stop the Polar Star from moving backwards, but I think I'm going to sort out the trigger box first. Uh, I will have to do CAD and figure out, figure out a linkage, but the thing I like about this over the first Nerf Polar Star I did is that this is self-contained. If I screw this all together and I get it so it works well, it doesn't explode on me. This will just sit like this, I can take it out and maintenance will be much easier. Um, so next I'm going to make sure this clearance with the Polar Star, I'm going to sand this down so it fits and then I'm going to take this inside and figure it out. Okay, so I've got this piece all hollowed out, but I need to create a retention system for this, so I need to model and print that. Okay, I got the trigger board retention system all modeled in Fusion and printed. It sits nicely in here and the Polar Star trigger board clips nicely in. Uh, the other thing I need to model and print is a retention system for the Polar Star jack. When I put downward or force on this line, the jack actually flexes where it is and it moves around a bit. So I need to create a system to hold that down. Okay, I got this all printed and it holds the jack quite nicely. It actually clips into the shell using some of the posts that were already in the shell. Uh, it did require a lot of cutting and modification to get it to fit though, so on my second version I'm going to account for that. And then also when I take the uh, door, the de-jamming door, it doesn't go in because it hits this right here. So on my second version I'm going to need to shrink that down so the door can actually fit and move in there. Uh, otherwise it holds the jack in quite nicely and I just need to make the second version. I got the second version of the Polar Star jack retention system. Uh, modeled in Tinkercad because Fusion 360 stopped working and it started to print. Okay, I got this version 2 all printed and installed. The door now works and this holds this securely. It's working great and while I was at it, I also printed this little linkage that is going to bridge the trigger to the board. That little piece. Okay, so I've done some work off camera and I believe that I am ready for final assembly of the rifle. Um, the work that I did off camera was installing this screw here to hold the, mother, uh, the trigger board down. I also glued in this bridge from the trigger to the switch I also um, fitted the maggle just a little better down here. 
I drilled the hole for the line, and I just did a general test fit. Additionally, I took this, uh, the tray, off of the battery cover so that it's more easy to just take out the FCU and the battery. Um, I, something I had trouble with was the mag release and mag catch. There was not enough room here to put a spring and there was not enough room for the mag catch in general so I had to file it down so it's much thinner. And then I replicated the circle they have on gearboxes and M4s in here with some 3D printed parts so that the mag catch actually springs back. Uh, it catches. Uh, so I'm going to do the final assembly of the rifle. Uh, this cover now fits great over the trigger box and snaps right in. And then a single screw holds it down. Then some more of the decorational pieces need to be installed. The motor switch does no longer fit because of the board and I can't cut it down because it would fall out so this is just not going to be included. This gets installed here but it is in the way of the line so this also cannot be included. Okay, and the rifle is all done. I have this to cover the extra barrel sticking out, the solenoid fires, the de-jamming door opens and closes for easy access to the hop-up unit. That electrical tape might have been a slight mistake, but... And it fires. So, let's go do the test fire. It's all done, and I couldn't be happier with the results. It turned out better than I thought it ever would. Everything works, and the trigger feels great, the magwell's awesome, and it's way better than the original Nerf Polar Star. I even have plans to turn one of these Nerf barrel attachments into a tracer unit for a hot swappable tracer. Uh, the trigger is just as good as you'd expect from any other Polar Star. So we can get that nice trigger response we all know and love from a Polar Star. All in all, this is one of my favorite builds I've done, and I can't wait to do another. If you want to see a gameplay video with this fairy gun, subscribe so you know when it comes out. Thanks for watching.